good evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you that are online and all of you that joined us and listening to us warm up. <laughs> we thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Greg Patrick, Senior Pastor of the Bridge Southwest Community Christian Center, and I'm joined by Pastor Kathy Mason and Pastor uh, uh, Michael McKelvey, and we're here today to give you a great lesson, a wonderful lesson in the Word, and that Word comes to us uh, today by the way of reasons, reasons why Christians do what we do and why we do it so completely, uniquely, and purposely for God. That's who we are. We are Christians, and we want to act like that. We want to be like that, but we've got to be trained to be that way. All right? Well, we're going to start off with a word of uh, a song of praise, amen, and uh, it'll be, I guess we'll just sing a little bit of How Great Is Our God. How about that, Jim? How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Yeah, let's see it one more time. How great is our God, everybody. How great is our God. like you know him today. Amen, amen. And we're going to ask now that Reverend Kathy Mason must lead us into uh, our prayer tonight and uh, remembering those that are really sick right now. And uh, yeah, they're going. Yeah, okay. <laughs> amen. We're talking about it. Okay, and um, we're praying for those that have contracted COVID. We're praying for Yolanda. Yolanda Roberts, uh, our director of the school, and she has it, uh, a, a mild case of COVID, so we're certainly praying for her. Oh, my God, is everything going on around here? <laughs> okay. All righty. Come on, Pastor Kathy. Lead us in prayer. Father God, we just come humbly before you tonight, God, just thanking you for being our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for having sovereign reign, God, and all the things that be going on in this world, God, but we thank you that we can call upon you, and your word declares if we call upon you, God, you will answer us, God, and we know, God, that you are able to fix any situations that we're facing on tonight, God. We pray for those who are sick among us, God. We lift up Astra's Aunt Arizona to you, God, even as she lie there in a hospital bed. God, with the doctors have done all they can do, God. We trust, God, that you have our power in heaven and in earth. And it be thy will, God. We pray that you raise her up, God. Give her a longer life, God. We know that you are more than able. You're capable, God. She belongs to you. We all belong to you, God. Those that are sick with this COVID right now, God, we ask you to touch in the 
name of Jesus. This monkeypox, we bind that up in the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing in our land and our country, God. Oh, God, we just ask you right now to move, God, like you have moved before, God, in our land, God, that people will come to you, God, and ask, what must I do to be saved, God? Touch your people, God. And even tonight, God, we lift up this word to you tonight, to, tonight God, as it go off in the streaming, God, as it go across the airways, God, even in the sanctuary, God, we pray, God, that ears would be open, God, that hearts would be open to receive your word, God. So we submit it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Have that on way on tonight, God. We thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit will reign, God, yes, and that you will give us revelated knowledge of your word, understanding of your word, that we may grow, God, because we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we thank you on tonight, and we give you all praise. We give you honor and glory, and it's in Jesus' name we do ask it all. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands in the house. Come on, give God a praise in the house. Amen. This house and in your house. Amen. God bless you. Let's get into the word today. We've got a good word today. It's coming to us from the book of 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. As a matter of fact, I preached on this Sunday in one of our services, and um, we're going to be looking at this in this time, uh, the 18th through the 27th verses. And uh, the theme that we're going through is reasons, reasons, reasons. And uh, today's reason is the reason why we run, the reasons why we run. We are runners. And as you see this sign behind me that uh, that brother uh, that Andrew made, it's just showing people running, people in a constant run. That's what life is all about, a constant run. But you got to be running for the right reason, the right purpose, and finding that reason and purpose is the key to life. Now, we, um, we're going to talk, let me just lay down some foundation here. Paul, uh, after Paul, Paul had to uh, reaffirm his apostleship because people were denying because of what he had done killing Christians and chasing Christians down and putting them into prison and literally, yes, uh, killing them as well. Uh, he felt They felt that he was unqualified to be an apostle uh, for a very, uh, various other reasons as well. But Paul, in the first verse of, the, of this chapter, uh, chapter 9, he begins to affirm his apostleship. He lets them know, I am an apostle. I have been, I, in fact, I'm the one that brought you to Christ and I am an apostle just like any of the other apostles, the Lord's blood, brothers. He said, any just like any one of them, I am an apostle. And then after affirming his, uh, his own apostleship, he affirmed the fact that the, those that serve in the ministry need to eat and be uh, fed by the things that were raised in the ministry. And I mean, he put, he put down a, a, an incredible argument, if you will, uh, about that. Paul wants the church at Corinth to know that all churches, not just that church, but all churches should be uh, the importance of reaching out and taking care of those that help them, those that are working for them in the word of God. And not only, um, not only presenting themselves as humble Christians and taking care of them, but Paul never accepted anything. He did it uh, upon occasion, but, uh, uh, but most of the time he did not accept any reward. He did, but he had the right to do so. He had the right to have an offering. He had the right to, uh, to accept from, he said, those that are, that, you know, that there are farmers, they eat from the food that's, that's grown. Uh, those that are doing other things, they eat from whatever is raised. And so he, he presented this great and wonderful argument uh, about this. And um, so Paul, uh, he goes to another case. He goes to, uh, he makes an excellent case of the compensation, of course, including himself. But then he goes to uh, a series of metaphors about winning and running and being in the race of life. And uh, we're going to be talking about that today. So we're going to go to a few, a few subjects that are in here, but mostly understanding that people need us to humble ourselves. People need us to recognize that they recognize, might recognize that they need Christ, but if we're presenting it in such a manner that we repel them, we are not doing what we need to help them, okay? So we want to bring them to Christ. We don't want to drive them away from Christ. And if we're too into self, sometimes we can do that. And if anybody had a reason to brag and boast about, about knowing God, it was Paul. He was educated. He was a great speaker. He had a lot of things, but he didn't boast in himself. He boasted in the Lord, all right? And that's the key there. So, um... Let's go and start off in chapter, chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians. If whatever version of the Bible you use, it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Don't even worry about it. Uh, but we want to go there this, this evening, and let's look at what Paul begins to say 
about how we not only serve each other, but how we also are able to help people by becoming what they need, okay? Yeah, all right, let's start off at verse 18 Amen. there, Pastor Kathy. Amen, he starts out with, what is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, mm -hmm. that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So Paul is asking, what is his prize? What is my reward for this? I'm doing this voluntarily. So what is my reward? So, so Paul, what I see here is that he's not, his desire, he's driven by his desire, first of all, to please God, right. to obey God, the call and the command that God has for him to preach. But Paul, he did it not because he was doing it to be compensated. He was not driven by compensation. He, he, he had, had every right to earn it, just like you said. He had every right. Even God instructed in the word, if you read back an earlier verse in verse 14, by, the Bible says, in the same way the Lord commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. He's talking about compensation. They should get paid. But Paul is saying, however, I choose to do this voluntarily. I choose to freely do this. And that word abuse literally means to use to the full. He had an apostolic ship that he could have used to the fullest, and a part of that was to get him paid to receive a, a salary from the Corinth church, but he chose not to do that. Paul understood when he preached and when we preach and teach the gospel, it is our right to receive a blessing, to be, receive that compensation. Yeah. But more than anything, our reward comes from winning souls That's and from the pleasing God. There's the key. The soul winner's crown. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. You want to say anything on the rest? Yeah, I noticed, uh, say, Paul was called to preach the gospel. It wasn't his idea. It was the sovereignty of God that called him. But Paul stepped up to the plate and accepted that responsibility. It was a stewardship. A stewardship is a valuable responsibility that takes care of managing care through God. So, so Paul, said, Paul said, what is my reward? <laughs> what is my reward? What, yeah. What's, what's my yeah. reward? The, the church of Corinth, people that were used to getting compensation, and they said, well, what, what is he in it for? I mean, if he's not getting money, you know, Corinth was into profit. Right. It was a very rich uh, city. It was a very, it was a, a, I mean, a center of everything as far as economical things were concerned. And Paul uh, let them know it ain't about money. I didn't come to you for money or anything else. But we have the right to do it if we wanted to. But the key here is Paul said, I will not abuse the trust that's been given to me through my calling. My, through my calling, I've been given the, the will and the right and the purpose of preaching wherever and whenever I'm called upon to do so. And I'm not going to think about how much I'm going to make if I preach the word. No, that's not what we do. We do it because God called us to do it and we want to do it to the best of our ability regardless to compensation. Amen? All right, Reverend, why don't you go on to verse 19. Verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all so that I may win more. Oh, man. See, Paul was a Roman citizen, and as a Roman citizen, he had certain rights. He was also an apostle, which also gave him certain rights. But he said that I am a free man. I am not a slave to any human being. However, for the sake of the gospel, I was free to make myself a servant unto all. Greek words there. Uh, one is doulos and one, one is ministeros. Okay, so doulos means I'm a slave. I have no choice. I must follow the master's bidding no matter what. And then ministeros is a servant. That means you're serving, humbly serving those that are around you. So he must do exactly what God has called him to do, but he's also a servant. He humbles himself and serves voluntarily. Yes. You know, there's a lot. I, I was just at a, at a place where the, the, the Houston Food Bank was, and all these people were there, and they were serving voluntarily. They weren't looking for compensation. They knew what their calling was, mm -hmm. and they accepted the calling, but they served in their calling. Some people don't want to serve even though they've been called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
if you've been called to do anything for God, you must be a servant. And yes. then after you've served, you'll learn how to lead because you'll be a greater servant to those that you lead. Isn't that right? Oh, oh I, I just love this part here. That Paul, he wanted them to know, I am a slave. A yes. slave not only to the gospel, yes. but a slave to the ministry yes. that I've been called unto. To serve everybody that I might win more. Yes. For the Lord. Now he gets into winning now. He starts into this thing about winning, okay? So we've got some, some verbs and some metaphors we're going to be dealing with. They mean saying something, but meaning something uh, in addition to it, okay? All right, we'll go to verse 20. Verse 20. Verse okay. number 20. And unto the Jews I become as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. So yes, he's looking at two different groups of people here. He's saying, to the Jew, I become a Jew. And we know that Paul was a Jew, but he was no longer under the law. But he's saying he's willing to go back to the law. But if it, in order to, to win souls is what he's talking about here. If I become a Jew, I'll practice their customs and I'll practice their traditions. If I need to eat kosher food, if I need to pray three times a day, if I need to participate in the Jewish purification, whatever I need to do to win souls. And then he said, if I, to who, for those that are, I'm sorry, to those that are without law, as without law. So now he's talking about the Mosaic law. And Paul knows that he was no longer under the more Mosaic law. But Paul is saying what he's doing here is building bridges. He's building bridges to allow those that may not be like he is. So that's why that we're a bridge. So we got to be who we need to be in order that other people can cross over to Christ. So he's willing to participate in, in whoever he needs to participate and pardon them of their ignorance because that's until they come to some of the knowledge of the truth, Paul had to pardon them of their ignorance. So, so we have to ask the question is, how do we teach other people and how do we win souls? Do we expect for people to have the understanding that you may have as a mature Christian in Christ? Paul said, no, I'm, I'm going to go to where they're at mm -hmm. to reach them in order to bring them to Christ. He's going to go deeper in that as well. That is a very, that's a key to it. You want to say anything on that, Rev? Yeah, he <laughs> made himself adjustable to being receptive by them. And he continued to obey the Jewish law, even yes. though he knew the Jewish law could not offer salvation. Right. He understood that. But in order to get to them, to communicate with them, he had to be able to relate to them. Yes. And so that's why he was receptive. So you given an opportunity. Anytime you give an opportunity to tell someone about Christ, that's you need to take advantage of that. Sometimes you need to meet people just where they are. That's, that's right. Just well, there, where they are. There's the key. There's the key. He became what he needed to be so that he can win people to Christ. And he made, he made a statement there. It sounds like it's repetitive, but it's not. See, there are Jews, there are certain Jews that, that, that are Jews by proselyte. That means they accepted God by what they, their faith told them. Okay, they weren't original Jews, but they became Jews through proselytes. And their, their, their salvation is in the law. Okay, so uh, in, in that instance, uh, if you recall, remember in, uh, in Acts, we just went through the book of mm -hmm. Acts, yeah. and Paul went back to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and uh, all of the uh, apostles that were there, James and the others, they said, you've got to reaffirm your, your belief yeah. Yeah. that you operate according to the law, and we need you to go and be an example right now. We need you to go with these other four men, yeah. and you need to be an example uh, to what you claim that you are, because everybody's saying you you do not uh, any longer participate in the, in the ritual washings or yeah. you don't participate in anything. You don't believe in water baptism. They're, they're saying all these different things and yeah. you've got to show them that you do believe in it. Now, Paul knew it wasn't essential for him to, yes. to have his life and it wasn't essential to Gentiles. But to keep peace, yes. he became what the law needed him to be. He started, he, he took the men out, the four men. He paid for all of their needs. He paid for everything. And he went through the ritual washing, yes. even though it wasn't necessary for his salvation. Mm -hmm. But he became, he went under the law so that he could show them, I still believe, even though it has no bearing on my salvation, right. I still will go through it. So right. they, see, the key is not allowing yourself 
to become a stumbling block yes. to someone else's faith. Yes. That's what the first Corinthians tells us. It, we will not become a stumbling block. If you look back just a, one chapter ahead, uh, before in the eighth chapter, you'll see that we, Paul says, I don't ever want to be a stumbling block to someone receiving faith and someone practicing faith. Yeah. Because that way, because and even though I know more than they know, I'm not going to act like I do. We've got this, you know, sometimes this, this nose that looks down at people, you know, because they don't know as much as we know. Mm -hmm. that, it's not about how much you know. That's it's right. about how much you love them yeah. and care for them mm -hmm. and not abuse them or show them that you uh, disdain them because they believe. Uh, he said, if I, if I have to eat a little meat, yeah. I'll eat the meat. That's right. Hello, somebody. That's it. If I have to do this, I, whatever it is, I will do it. Uh, as long as it's not against the will of God, but right, I will right. do it to gain that person. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now we're going into that a little deeper. So keep that's what that's what Paul is talking about here. To what, whoever needs him, he's going to become what's necessary to win more souls yes. to Christ. Okay. Look, uh, verse twenty-one, Rev. Yeah. To those who are without law, as without law, those not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I may might win those who are under law. Mm -hmm. Oh man, in other words, he first said that I am a Jew, but I am not under the law of Moses. Right. And he says that to the, like the Gentiles mm -hmm. who are not under the law of Moses because they don't know the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he, he's referring to and describing them as I will be like the Gentiles in order to get the message over to them. Mm -hmm. I will not observe Jewish laws because they don't know anything about the Jewish. They don't understand about the Jewish laws. <laughs> but I will what? I will relate to them. I will go to their function. I will understand their God in order for me to understand them so I can win them to Christ. He became unto them that in which they understood their culture. And he qualified the statement. He said, now I still believe in that, but I will stop that so I don't offend them. Something Doing something they don't have any idea what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. I can't begin to let them do it when they don't understand it. Uh, a, a new convert that doesn't know anything about uh, uh, the the Lord's Supper and uh, the blood of Christ and mm -hmm. here drink his blood eat his eat his flesh they're gonna be saying what yeah, you yeah, know yeah, <laughs> you, exactly. you better explain yourself yes, so yes. you know we have to we have to sometimes curtail what we know so that we can win somebody yes. to Christ we're in yes. the we, we're trying to get them in the race but we can't get them in the race right. if we put a if we put chains on them yeah, where they can't yeah, run yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> Pastor, well, uh, yeah. one of the things I see in this is that Paul had a way of conversing with people without being, you know, confrontational. So he understood their differences, and we have to understand people have come from different cultures and different backgrounds and different religions. It's kind of like when in Rome, do as the Romans, but Paul is saying, I can do all of these things, but I'm still under the law of Christ. So I'm still not going to compromise my faith in order to to win this soul That's i'm going to still be i'm still under the now, law of christ right where you're talking go ahead right into <laughs> okay. verse 22 because uh, you're talking about the weak now the yes. weak uh, yes. that, that that i was just speaking about a minute ago amen he says to the weak became i weak as weak that i might gain the weak i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some so he's talking about the weak, the the those who may be two two different two different interpretations. One said to those who may um, be Christians, you know, like Christians who have are new in the faith, but also to those who are converts but still practicing some of their old customs, because we understand that you know, especially those who are may come out of the Jewish faith or or other denominations or other faith then there may be some practices that they have that they until they come to the full knowledge of the truth of things that we are not we are not are bound to we're not yoked to so paul is saying to to these people they're weak but he said i become weak in other words if i need to be a vegetarian not to offend someone i will become a vegetarian so his goal is to not like pastor said not to be a stumbling block but but to be able to to be able to meet people in where they are in their faith. This reminded me of something I you know back in the day, I used to be one of those that would turn and go in the opposite direction if a black cat crossed in front of me. Oh, okay. 
you know, that bad luck thing, wouldn't walk under a ladder, break a glass. But some people that are still, I learned that, you know, there are some people who still have beliefs like that. But, you know, that's keeping you, that's bondage. That's a form of bondage. So Paul is saying that there's those who are still maybe weak, so they're, that he had to become weak or not, you know, help, help them to grow in their faith, basically. There it is. Mm -hmm. there it is. I, I, Everything that Pastor Kathy is telling us has to do with not offending people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the offense. Right. And if you're offending someone by the ma your manner or, or by what you say or do, mm -hmm. you've got to watch how you do it uh, because they are listening to you. They are using you as their barometer as to whether they want to involve themselves even further. As we look at 1 Corinthians 8, chapter the, 11, uh, the 8th verse, 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse. It says, it's true that we can win God's approval by what we eat. Mm -hmm. We don't lose anything if we eat it. We don't gain anything if we do. But you must be careful so that your freedom, this is the New yeah, Living Translation, yeah, yeah. you must be careful that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience yeah. to stumble. Yeah. For the if others see you as superior knowledge, eating in the temple and idols, they will not be encouraged they, will, they won't be encouraged to violate their conscience by eating food that's been offered to idols. So we must become what we must be so that they can see Christ in us. We, it's not going to hurt us. Right. Like you said, the right. black cat, <laughs> yeah. you know, walking under a ladder, yeah. breaking a glass. spilling <laughs> salt, oh. breaking a glass. <laughs> so seven years of... Yeah, oh, come on now. <laughs> You, don't you let a superstition uh, yes. rule you, and don't you let it think that, oh, if I do that, it's going to, it's going to cause me to do this. No, it will not. Mm -hmm. You have a life. They have a life, and we, the stronger vessel, can endure the thing of, of the weaker person. Yes, yes, there are going to be people that weaker faith than you. They will be around you, but don't allow them to see that they are weaker. Mm -hmm. Treat them just as your equal. Say amen, somebody. You've got to treat them as equal. Amen. So that is the stumbling block of offense for the weaker vessel that we should never, ever do. Okay? Let's go to verse 23, uh, Pastor. Yeah, verse 23. I do all things for the sake of the gospel so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. The work of the gospel was the greatest accent around Paul. Mm -hmm. He lived for the gospel. He, he realized that following Christ was his all-assuming passion. Mm -hmm. He made it so that much that he shared that what? The blessings, when he say partakers of yeah, the blessings yeah, yeah. of the gospel. Paul was diligent, dedicated to the ministry. Mm -hmm. And so when we accept that gospel, we need to show that dedication yeah. to the gospel. We need to live, we need to breathe, we need to wake up, we need to go to sleep knowing that who we are in Christ. Yes, yes. Embrace it. Paul understood that, and he was proud mm. of what he was doing. Yes, yes. And, that, that, it, and that pride is not a pride within himself. No. He's happy doing, blessing the Lord by doing what he's yes. been called to do. And there, there, was, there was three alls in there that you read just a moment ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was three. He says, to the weak, I become weak that I might win the weak. I have become all, all things, things to all men that I, that by any means, all means I, to save some. Mm -hmm. Those three Greek words, passin, panta, and pantos, mm -hmm. that means that I will become, I will become anything to anyone ah. at any time. Yeah. Anything yeah. to anyone mm -hmm. at any time that's so that good. I can win people yeah, to good. Christ. And this was his passion mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. So he changed, he became a, a, meta, a metamorphi mm -hmm. just to win somebody yes. to Christ so yes. that they could see Christ in him and know mm -hmm. that it's all about God. And ooh, you got anything to say on that? <laughs> well, I think this is kind of the conclusion to the matter for what Paul is saying here. This is his bottom line purpose, and I think his narrative, it never Never change. He may have to change his behavior. He may have to change some methods. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that he's going to be all things to all men yes. to win souls. Amen. All things yeah. to all men yeah. at, any time, at any time. He's going to show them mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. All right. Come on. Verse 24. Verse number 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race Here run all. Uh -huh. 
but one receiveth the pride, so run that you may obtain. I, I love this verse. I really do because, you know, Paul, using, he's using a metaphor here, of course, and he's using a metaphor of the games that were held in, in Greece and back in, the, um, in ancient Greece. But what, and the Corinthians understood this race. They understood these games. And so Paul is saying here, he's using an athletic metaphor to describe how we should run. And, and, and if we think about it, in our Olympic games, we have three places. You know, you have the, the gold, the silver, and the bronze. But during these games, there was only one prize. There was only one prize. So Paul is saying, we have to run to win that one prize. So there was no second place awards. We had to, we were in this to win everything. So Paul said, you have to run in such a way to obtain the prize. And we know what that prize is and that reward is not the rewards of man, it's not the recognition of man, but it's to please God and to obtain those heavenly crowns that we will receive for the way that we run this way. So Paul is saying, run in such a way that you want to win the prize. Right. Act like you want to win. Yes, yes. Run like a winner. Run like a winner. That's uh, good. That, there's a key there. That's uh, no, he asked the question, don't you know that those that run, they're not running just to be running. That's right. They're running to obtain a prize. Right. They have a purpose. Yes. And that purpose is to win. Mm -hmm. Whether they're winning souls or whether they're winning their, yes. their own blessings, no matter what, they are running to win. Yes. And, you know, um, one of the winners, uh, it, it, there's always going to be someone, somebody that's trying to get somebody off course. Oh, you better know it. Okay? <laughs> trying to cheat or whatever else. Mm -hmm. You got to focus yes. on your prize. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on anything else. You want to say anything about that, Rev? Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at that Greek word, mm -hmm. race. It is translated as stay on. Uh -huh. Stay on, the word used to describe a standard 600 foot Greek foot race. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, we, we should run our race in such a way that we will receive a reward from a judge, but in the Christian race, we do not what? Compete with one another We're for a prize. Amen. We compete with ourselves. Yes. Uh -huh. it, it's the emphasis on our self discipline, not competition. Yes. <laughs> in a foot race, only one person is a winner, but in Christ's race, in a Christian race, all who keep the rule in obedience will get a reward. Get a re everybody. Amen. Everybody. Everybody in the race will get a reward. We're not I'm not trying to beat you to the finish line. I can't beat you. Absolutely. But I can do what God told me to stay in the race. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. I, amen. And I'm going to win my crown because my crown is already secured. Absolutely. All I've got to do is fall in line. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay, we're going to verse 25, Rev. Verse 25. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wealth, but we an imperishable. The word complete is a transliteration of, of antagonize, from which we get the English word agony. Mm -hmm. That is to receive the prize to our Lord. We want to get that thing that says, well done. Yes. <laughs> we need to yes. get to make every effort in our race to run because we know that an athlete, when he's training, yeah. he got to go through some things. Mm -hmm. He got to train. He got to do a lot of distant running. He got to take good nutritional food and, and sufficient tests, and, and he got to do stretch-ups. He got to warm up. Likewise, the spiritual athlete, we need to what? We need to put limits to our liberty. Yes. We need to exercise yes. self-control yes. yes. for a higher goal. So, so we're, we're disciplining mm -hmm. ourselves. Yes, yes. That's it. You've got to have a disciplined mm -hmm. schedule. You've got to have something whereby you know that you can get stronger mm -hmm. as you discipline your life. Yep. We mm -hmm. must discipline ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, 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 as Paul said, he says, and anyone who yes. competes for the prize is mm -hmm. temperate. They're dis constantly disciplining themselves for training, making sure their bodies mm -hmm. are not only uh, complete mm -hmm. or, or ready to compete, but they also want to finish. Yes. It's no sense in, uh, in competing yeah. or running 
when you're not, you don't have your mind set on finishing what you set out to do. Y yes, you want to run, but you want to get your body in condition, get your mind in condition, get your spirit in condition so that you can finish the race that you've been called unto. Yes, all of these metaphors that Paul is using is to let everybody know, hey, if you're going to get in the race, get in there, but run so that you have the capability of winning. And then he separates them out. He says, the world's running for this reason, yeah. and we're running for that reason. That's it. That's Two it. different reasons. They're, getting, they're trying to get a worldly crown. Yeah. They're trying to get worldly recognition. They're trying to get worldly acknowledgement and worldly favor, but we run yeah. so that we can receive the favor and the acknowledgement of God. That's Amen. our purpose of running. We're running for two different reasons. Now, mm -hmm. they, do, they do it to win that, to win that admiration. Right. We do it to win God's favor. Yes. Just to let God say, well done. Yes. 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 <laughs> good race. Amen. You ran good today. Mm -hmm. Keep on running. Yes. Okay, yes. that's what we, we want to amen from God. Amen. We ain't worried about amen. men. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Amen. You have this? Are you, you, like you chomping in my, the bit Well, my <laughs> only point in this is, is as we run, we have to keep our eyes on the prize. Mm -hmm. Because Paul's talking about this discipline. It's, it's even for an athlete when they go into strict training, you have to be disciplined. Yeah. But when you keep your eye on the prize, and we, when we keep our eyes on what's important, mm -hmm. you know, that sometimes you, you won't give in to that flesh yeah. when you know the consequences of it yeah. if I give in to it. Because my prize that I'm trying to win is more important than this temporary satisfaction. That's to get your mind off the race, off yes. the game, off the mm -hmm. whatever you're in. Yeah. And many of us, we're, we're in a fight. Yes. We're in a race. Yes. We're wrestling. All of these things are we're in. Whatever sport you want to relate it to, you are in there, and yes. you've got to be cautious and careful not to fall into the entrapment of sin, which weakens yes. your flesh. Yes. I don't know if you know anything about boxing or anything like that, but boxers have to go another place so that they're not distracted mm -hmm. by women mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or other, you know, beer and wine and all these other things. They get completely awake so they can focus on what? Training. Yep. Mm -hmm. We can't just go out there and run a, a five mile race, a 500 uh, meter race, mm -hmm. and expect our bodies to perform in good manner. You've got to train. Yeah. Everybody who runs the race disciplines mm -hmm. and trains themselves mm -hmm. to do what God needs for them to do. If you're out there in the world, you're going to, you know, you can't run the race that God wants you to run yeah. when you're trying to please man. They are going to get you off track. They're going to distract you. They're going to tempt you. They're going to keep you off balance. And you need to have all your balance, all your strength, all your power, all yes. your focus. Yes. You got to have every single one of those. And, and, yes. say, and you got to do what Christ told us to do. We serve. We testify. Yes. We encourage. We witness. We give testimony. We love. And we give anything that we can so that people can come to Christ. Yeah. They yeah. see it in you. Yeah. They'll come to Christ because of the Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's Amen. go to the next one. Okay. We Amen. only got a couple left here. Verse he said, 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. So now Paul is kind of taking it personal and telling us how he's running this race. He's making a, a declaration of, of his personal training, you might say. So he's, he's insisting that he's not running aimlessly. He, he's not, his fight is intentional his run is intentional he he talks about this um beat it beat it the air so what he's talking about is shadow boxing i didn't i didn't really understand what shadow boxing was i had to kind of do some learning myself and and understanding what shadow boxing is so shadow, shadow boxing is a, a, a training tool he's and it says where they duck and strikes against an a, an imaginary opponent so it's kind of like you just fighting again in the air you know yeah you you punch it so paul said look look i'm not shadow boxing here my race is intentional and he understands who his opponent is. His opponent is not no other man, but his opponent is himself, his flesh. So he's saying, I'm constantly, I have to discipline my flesh. And I thought about that because it's hard for us to discipline our flesh if we, not, if we don't have the word of God, the Holy Spirit, 
to help us because we have to have a mindset like Paul said in, in Romans 12 and, 12 and 1, I beseech thee, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So Paul is saying, look, I have to deny my flesh. My opponent is not the world. My opponent is my own self here. And that's what I have to constantly do because my race, my fight is intentional. I'm intending to win this prize. <laughs> go ahead, Rev. I know you're yeah, chomping but, at the bit oh, over yeah, here. Well, go ahead. Well, well, Paul is, is want to say that, look, I, I have a purpose. It is perfectly, it's not aimless. It is not half hard felt. It is something that I'm doing that what? I am reaching for that prize. And he is talking about the judgment seat of Christ. You know, he is simply saying that, look, every time that I get out there and swing, I don't just want to be throwing blows in the air. I want to hit my mark. And the only way I can hit that mark is what? Is to reach for a higher calling. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, let me just say, um, Paul says with excitement in the Greek, it, it, it intimates incitement. He says, so I run. Yeah. Yeah. I run. Mm -hmm. I know how to run. I, I, and I, I fight. I know how to fight. Right. I wrestle. I know how to wrestle. Yeah. Whatever you can put it to any sport that you have out right. there, right. they all have something where they're just fighting with the air, just practicing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Paul said, practice time is over. Oh. I'm serious about what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, like you said, shadow boxing, but even in karate or taekwondo or any of the others, you still practice. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you wonder why people just white waving a thing and kicking and stuff that's not there? It's because they're practicing. Yeah. So when they are in the fight, they'll know how to how to really fight mm -hmm. with it. They're running. They're out there running. Uh, why do people run on these? You know the the, the, the treadmill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I now, we run on the treadmill. Yeah, we we're just putting our bodies in condition. Yeah. Paul said, "I got to get myself in condition." Yeah. He says, "I run with purpose. I run with commitment. I run." with determination, but yes. most of all, I run with focus. Yes. I've got to stay focused on what my purpose actually yes. is, and that's to win. Yes. Paul says, I'm going to run so I can win. Yes. I'm going to fight so I can win. Yes. I'm going to stay focused so I can win. Yes. Win not just for me, I can win for somebody else. Yes. Isn't that right? That's okay? Good. Woo! Right. Oh, <laughs> we good. all got a little bit of that. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the last one. Last verse, verse 27, and let's have some comments on that. Amen. But I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself would not be disqualified. Man, in, in another sense, Paul viewed his flesh as his enemy. He, he recognized the need of exercise and strict self-discipline. Obviously, he was not speaking of self-discipline in the physical realm right, right. alone. He was had it in mind, the moral discipline, mm -hmm. and the discipline in the moral sense of his life, including voluntary curtailing of personal rights and liberties yeah. if necessary. I mean, think of the things that we go through in life that we are not willing to give up. Right. You know, sometimes we have to avoid certain entertainment that misdirect us in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Also, substance abuse. We need to be disciplined. There's certain things we yeah. shouldn't be taking or certain things we be, sh shouldn't be doing. We shouldn't be saying certain things in our language. Mm -hmm. We have to have discipline. And I notice he says, he says, confess the fear of disqualification. Paul was not talking about losing his salvation. Absolutely. He couldn't lose your salvation. He was talking about in the context is that what? I won't, do not want to lose my reward. Yes. 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 So I have to discipline myself. Yes. Okay. Uh, what you say? Okay, all right. Uh, he had to discipline his body mm -hmm. to keep his body prepared for any eventuality. Uh, Paul was, I mean, he was real concerned that um, if he slid, how can he tell others to run when he's not running himself? How can he tell others to how others to live when he's not living it himself? The disqualification would be there if he preached and he wasn't practicing what he was teaching. He wasn't living what he was preaching. That means that he was disqualified and unable to guide them, lead them, or correct them, or rebuke them because he's not doing it himself. Amen. That Amen. makes him totally, completely 
and, and unfortunately disqualified. Yeah. When the pastor, preacher, teacher, mm -hmm. or any other exampling person will do things that uh, are not according to what he's saying yeah. that we should do. Yes. Impossible. You've got to keep your focus so because others are watching you. Yes. yes. They're watching you. Yes. It's wanting to live a right life. Yeah. But if you are doing less than what you claim you should be doing or they should be doing, they're not going to listen to you any longer. Right. You're uniquely, <laughs> unfortunately, mm -hmm. disqualified. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you cannot, you've got to look back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a fighter telling them to, to, to watch the right hook because the right hook can get hit, hit you in your left eye and your eye get big and, and what, 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 you're telling people to watch and how not to get hit and you're walking around with a black eye yourself trying okay. to tell them what to do. Now, you can't walk around with a black eye. Absolutely. You have to walk around as you claim yes. that you are, you must live it as a pro and, and, and you must share it. Amen. You can't share it cleanly amen. unless you live it. Amen. amen. You want, you <laughs> I, I'm, I'm amen to that because, Pastor, it's, it's like you said because, see, People have a tendency to look and then listen. Because if you, if you are trying to tell someone something that they shouldn't be doing and you're doing it themselves, they, it's like you're talking loud and saying nothing. Because they, you're, you're, they've turned off because they turn they're, off. you know, you might say you can't judge me, but yeah, we can judge you if you're trying to tell me what to do and you're not doing it yourself. So it is, it's so imperative when we stand and we, we proclaim the gospel, and we're teaching and preaching the gospel, and that's why Paul said he had to keep his flesh under subjection because we just can't do everything our flesh wants to do. Years ago, uh, years ago, I had, I had a couple of preachers that they were teaching, they were great teachers, great preachers, and they would teach on certain subject and this and that and the other, don't do this, don't do that, and do, do this, do that, and if you're telling people, hey, it's wrong, it's a sin to live together. Mm. You can't live together. Mm -hmm. And you're getting up there preaching it and teaching it and saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. And then they come to find out you living with somebody. What does that make them? Mm. Disqualified. Disqualified. You can't stand in the pulpit preaching some, one thing and you live in another. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get an amen in amen. this house? Amen. You must be consistent. You must be focused. You must be committed to what you're doing. And if you are doing less than that, yes. you are not qualified to preach this gospel. Now, everybody has sin that they encounter, but they're not living it. Yes. You understand? Yes. They may fall, but they're not swimming in it. Wow. They're not Good. staying down and laying down in it. Yeah. They correct themselves and say, I'm at fault. I Lord, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they ought to ask forgiveness of anybody that they offended while they did it. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes. That's the way it should be. That's the way it is. This is what Paul is saying. Yes. I can't live, I can't run one way and expect others to run with me yes. when I'm not doing it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like me walking and telling him, y'all run, I'll be up there in a minute. It can't be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, let me stop. I'll be able to preach this no, thing today. Uh, give me some final words, Rev. you have any final words? Yeah, on verse 25, it struck me out when it says that everyone who competes in the Christian race must exercise self-discipline. Yeah. There are so many areas in our lives that we might realize that we need discipline. We need that self-control. Our Bible reading, our prayer time, need to set aside some time watching TV, either limit time on social media, evaluate your priorities and, and how you spend money, how you spend your time, how you spend your energy. Yeah. More faithful attendance at church. Yeah. You need to think about that. And get involved in the church ministry carefully, but do not become a workaholic because you forget about and you're running the wrong race when you do that. That's the word. So mine came from verse number 24, part B. So run that you may attain. So my, my thought in all of this is that there's a race and we're all running in this race. But you, there has to be a certain way that we, we run. Paul ran with a winning attitude. And we have to run with a winning attitude in the way we have that. 
when an attitude is that we got to be persistent. We got we got to be consistent. We got to steady the course and stay and stay on the course. And we got to read the word. We got to go into training. And training comes from reading the word, studying the word, spending time with God in prayer. Because the truth to the matter is that the end of this race, because we're gonna all this race is gonna end for all of us one day. Our ultimate prize is to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's why I'm staying in this race. <laughs> Stay in the race. Do you not know? That's what the scripture says. Paul said, do you not know that all that run have a reason for running? You have to have the right motive. And that motive is to obtain the prize. You don't run to get salvation. You run because you have salvation. And you help others to find salvation. But you can't outrun them. You can't leave them behind because you've increased your stamina. Uh, stamina. You've got to also remember that they're trying to, to go where you're going. You've got to slow down a little bit sometimes. Don't run so fast that you leave them behind. Don't run the race. Don't run your race so fast that you forget about others. Forget about, as Pastor said, your, your family. Forget about your friends. Forget about those that your loved ones. Yeah, you can outpace them and outrace them, but is that what you want to do? You want to remember them. Spend time with them as well. Don't focus on the race so hard that you run and leave people that need you to help them to win. We are encouragers. We are exhorters. We are those that encourage them to keep running. That's what a coach does. We all are coaches. Yeah testimonials, witnesses as to what God wants them and wants us to do. And we must continue to encourage each and every one. That's all. Paul says, I become whatever's necessary so I can win, encourage, strengthen those in Christ. That's what we do. That's who we are. Amen. Amen. Did you have a good lesson? I love this lesson tonight. Amen. God bless you. We hope that you enjoyed it tonight. And we want you to make that choice, that decision as to what you're going to do in your life, how you're going to do it. And when you do it, do it, <laughs> I'm going to use this word gusto, do it with commitment, dedication, do it with devotion to whom you serve. We, people can see when you believe what you believe. They can tell whether you really believe it or that you're just acting. You may be, be able to fool them sometimes, but you ain't going to fool them all the time. You got to be what? Be for real. The first lesson that we had was about running and running. And I mean, I'm sorry, about singing, the reasons why we sing. Then we had a lesson about the reason to be for real. Now we're talking about running. If you're serious about it, if you're real about it, run and act like you know what you're running about. You should, you should know what you're running about. And you're running for Jesus. My great mama said, I'm running for Jesus and I ain't tired yet not tired because she knows she knew why she was running. Amen. I, my great grandmother was somebody that just loved the Lord and I'm sure your mothers and great grandmothers but your children are going to be talking about you. How you love the Lord. Show that you love him. Run the race with diligence, patience but most of all with determination to make it to the end. God bless you today. Amen. Let's give them God a hand. Praise. Amen. All right. If you'd like to talk to someone else about how you can change your life and what you can do in your life, please call 281-983-LOVE, 281-983-LOVE. And if you have no one answers or you, get, you miss us, uh, put out extension 112, extension 112, leave us a message. We'll be happy to get back with you. God bless you today. All right, it's time to give, y'all. Come on, let's put, let's put our, our giving together. Amen. It's time to give. Praise the Lord. So let's... Uh, you can give any of the ways that are on your screen right there. You can give by Cash App, Zelle. You can give, uh, call to give, text to give, 281-98, I'm sorry, 281-607-4232. Huh? It's not up there. <laughs> 281-607-4232. You can, you can uh, call that number or you can write us at the bridge, 14880 Bel Air Boulevard, Houston, Texas. We don't have our slide tonight, I guess. We, oh, there it is. Okay. All right. 14880 Bel Air Boulevard, Houston, Texas, 77083. And we, you can give right here in the house as well. All right? That, boy, we had a good lesson tonight. 
running the race, amen. That metaphor to run, amen, encompasses a lot of different things, y'all. It's not, I hope you're just not limiting it to what you're doing with your feet and running, amen. It's your life, your lifestyle, and what you do for the Lord. That's, that's the metaphor. That is what it, what it encompasses, and we've got to run the way, live the way, and do the things that pleasing are pleasing in the Lord's sight, all right? Well, praise God. We thank you for coming and being with us this evening on whatever social media platform that you have today. Well, um, we, on behalf of Pastor Kathy Mason and uh, Pastor the, the Reverend Michael McKelvey, I'm Pastor Greg Patrick, Senior Pastor here at the Bridge. We invite you to come and be with us this Sunday. We're going to have uh, the fifth Sunday worship service. It's called uh, 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 Total Experience Sunday. And uh, we we got a special guest coming at 11 o'clock, A.V. Anthony Valerie will be with us here at 11 o'clock uh, from Magic 102 from actually Praise 92.1. He's doing all of the programming over there. So we're going to have A.V. here with us, amen, at 11 o'clock. And Pastor Kathy Mace is going to be preaching at 8 o'clock, amen. So we're going to have a great time, and uh, we're going to have special guests here. We're going to have uh, singing and just praising, celebration singers and ha Harvey Baker and uh, Radical Praise and all. Also, Theresa Grayson will be here in both services as well. Amen. We just finished up that album with her. And boy, you're going to really enjoy that. Gerald is producing an album on her that you won't believe. Amen. We're going to have that ready for you probably uh, sometime in the, the winter, after the winter. You don't want to release a record during Christmas. Amen. They're going to play it. <laughs> they play Christmas songs. <laughs> all right. Well, that's the business. That's the way it is. All right. Okay. Well, God bless you today. Let's all stand. We're going to be dismissed at this time. Let's all stand and uh, let's talk to the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you for allowing this time to come together. And Father, just fellowship and learn and teach and preach. And Oh, Father, just share your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway. Help us, Father, to not only love your word, hear your word, know your word, but understand your word and live your word. That's the running we want to do, Father. We want to run in your word and share your word that we might copy it in our minds, we might burn it in within our minds, and we might share your word throughout the land and country. Thank you for those that gave tonight, Father. Continue to bless them, those that gave it. Those that had it not to give, oh, on the next occasion, help us, Father, to have that there. Bless us so that we can give and give towards your kingdom. Bless the offering, Father. May it be used for the purpose intended, and that's to spread your word throughout the land and country. And now, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God cause his face to shine down upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance of favor upon you and grant you peace. Now, henceforth and forever, let's all say amen. amen. Come on together. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Tell somebody around you, before you walk out that door, tell somebody you love them. God bless you. We love you also. We'll see you Sunday right here at the bridge. God bless. <laughs>